I'm going to explain briefly uh, Russell's version of the correspondence theory of truth that he outlines in this chapter. To understand this theory of truth, we kind of have to start with the you know the relevant objects <laughs> in in this truth. So the first you know object, so to speak, is, is me, right? And then there's uh, the world. So what the correspondence theory of truth is going to do is it's going to have something to say about the beliefs of the individual and what's real. Now Russell calls uh, this the correspondence between belief and fact. Now belief is going to happen in the individual. Fact is a way the world is. He's not using the word fact the way that we use the word fact. We use the word fact to mean something like uh, what's proven, right? A belief that's proven. But for Russell, a fact is not a belief at all. A fact is a way the world is. So this trash can being on top of the table, that's a fact. Let's take a look and see what's going on inside my head. So I'm looking at the trash can on the table. And remember, I'm not acquainted with the trash can or the table, right? I'm acquainted with sense data. But that's probably, you know, diving into some other material. But what's happening is we have the trash can on the table. And what's happening in my head is that I have this belief. The trash can is on top of the table. Now these three terms here, these are all terms, they constitute a belief. Okay? So I have the belief, and this is inside my head. There's me, or the, no, you, <laughs> the individual, with the belief. And uh, uh, there is the relation believes. So what we have here is we have the subject, that's you. We have the object, that's, that, that's the belief, and the object relation. That is uh, you believing the belief. These three things uh, together, the subject, the object relation, and the object, they constitute a complex whole. Complex whole doesn't mean that it's complicated, although this theory might be a little unnecessarily complicated, but the idea is it's complex as opposed to simple. Complex things have parts. Simple things don't. Okay? So this complex whole has parts, and the parts are constituents. So you, the belief, and the believing, you, the belief, and the believing, even the, even the relation there, the subject, the object, and the relation, they all form a complex whole. Now, the trash can on top of the table, uh, not the belief, mind you, I want to talk about the fact here, the fact of the trash can on top of the table, this is also a complex whole. The trash can is a, is a part of it, uh, the table is a part of it, is a constituent of it, and the relation on top of is another constituent. So I've got one, one complex whole, that's me, and I have another complex whole, that's the fact, all right? Or I should say the one complex whole, me, believe in the belief, that's one complex whole, and another complex whole, that's the fact of the trash can being on top of the table. And what exists between these two? Another relation that exists between these two uh, complex holes is the relation of correspondence. Now, for, Rus for this correspondence theory of truth, a belief is true just in case there's correspondence between the belief and the fact just in case there's correspondence between the belief and the fact. So if the belief is true, there's the belief, there's the fact, and there's a the correspondence. If the belief is false, then uh, the correspondence uh, doesn't, it doesn't exist, or maybe the, yeah, then there's no correspondence, I should say. If the belief is false, the belief still exists, there's still a fact, just not the fact that corresponds to the belief, uh, and there's a lack of correspondence between the belief and a fact. So to kind of sum up, if a belief is true, then I've got the belief, I've got the fact, and I've got the correspondence. And if I've got the belief and the fact and the correspondence, then I have truth. And that's the correspondence theory of truth.